Yeah, good afternoon. And uh, today's uh, lecture is uh, on circulatory system. You all know very well that every animal will have blood. Why the blood is required? It's as simple as like this. The blood is the liquid form which actually goes to one place to another place which is actually carrying many, many things to each and every cell. And similarly, in the insects. Insects also have a liquid form, which is actually present entire insect body, uh, which is actually carrying various minerals, proteins, amino acids, ions, what not, everything, even the hormones are being carried. Carried from one place to another place. So that all the tissue cells will get connected. And they will be supplied all these materials. The biggest and the most important specific characters as far as the insects is Insects are the one which have got an open circulatory system. What do you mean by the open circulatory system? In the animals like us, the blood is being circulated through a kind of pipes. And these pipes can be called as arteries, can be called as a veins, can be called as capillaries, whatever you call. So the blood will not be seen inside the body. And the blood is seen only in the pipes. If you cut the pipe, blood will ooze out. So when the blood circulates within the body through a kind of pipe systems, which is enclosed, that's called a closed circulatory system. And there are, again, the pumping mechanism. There's one kind of heart in our case. The heart is the pumping organ which actually pumps the blood, which actually purifies the blood also. And it pumps out the blood and also it takes the blood and again it purifies. That's how it is being circulated in our case. But as far as the insects are concerned, insects have a open circulatory system. What do you mean by the open circulatory system? It means insects have no veins, no capillaries, no arteries, no pipe system. It means if you could just cut the insect, everything is insect blood inside. And that blood, we call them as a hemolymph as far as the insects are concerned. And the hemolymph is everywhere within the body cavity. And the body cavity where the hemolymph actually baths all the organs, we call it as a hemocyte. So hemolymph is the blood of the insect. Hemocell is the body cavity where the blood is everywhere. So hemolymph and hemocell. And you must be having a doubt. How? If everything is inside like a river, a river flows from gravity, higher elevation to the lower elevation, or you can pump, you can pump through a pumping system, and that is possible in the closed circulatory system, like human beings, where the pump is a heart. But how the insect blood moves from one place to backwards to forwards, forwards to backwards, and to various organs like legs, wings, whatnot, antenna, and all these things. They have a wonderful system. And that's the biggest difference the circulatory system of the insects and also circulatory system of the humans. Let us just watch this video. You will try to understand how this circulatory system of the insects looks. That's what we have discussed. The biggest important function of any circulatory system, not only in insect, even the humans. It is the transport of various chemicals. It can be salts, it can be amino acids, it can be what not. It's a transport, a mechanism, 
from one place to another place. But in this case, you can see here, it is a simple pipe kind of structure. It is a simple pipe kind of structure. Actually, it's all open. This structure is basically used for pumping mechanism. Otherwise, blood is there in the entire body cavity. That blood we call them as a hemolymph. And the this cavity, entire body cavity is called as a hemocyl. And just look into this video. There's a small pipe dorsally. A pipe, actually it's a very, very delicate pipe that we will discuss in detail. A small delicate pipe on the door which actually tries to give some kind of mechanical vibration so that blood moves from one place to another place because it's all open unless until you have a, some kind of wavy kind of a turbulence kind of things blood will, will not move from one place to another place that to create a turbulence inside the body cavity to create some kind of wavy waves inside the body cavity, the insects have a, a small heart, unlike our heart, and that heart is called a dorsal blood vessel. That, the structure of the dorsal blood vessel and how the blood moves from backwards to forwards. Before we get into these details, we should know what is the importance of the circulatory system here. The most important, the most important function is actually movement of the salts, movement of the hormones, movement of the metabolic wastes from one place to another place. And also, it has got a wonderful role in the defense because the blood cells will have a lot of activity when the new unknown or a microbe comes inside the body for a defense mechanism, they actually tries to invade. They actually tries to kill them. And also, the circulatory system plays a wonderful role at the time of molting. You remember correctly when we are discussing about the molting process, and the volume of the body should increase. The volume of the body should increase to remove the old skin. Splitting of the old skin happens at the head, that's called agdesial suture. And that splitting is because of the increase of the volume of the body, and that increase in the volume of the body happens because of the hemorrhage. That's so nice. If you just cut open the insect from dorsal ventrally, this is how it looks inside the insect. And the body cavity, the entire body cavity can be divided into three chambers. And each chamber we call them as a sinus. And that division because of a muscular structure, a tissue which is actually separated, which is actually forming laterally, and the, that's called is dorsal diaphragm. The blue color line is the dorsal diaphragm. This dorsal diaphragm is a very, very thin muscular structure. And this dorsal diaphragm is actually on the dorsal side, and which actually separates the gut from the blood dorsal vessel. That's what is called heart, we call them dorsal blood vessel. And ventrally we have, the insects have another ventral diaphragm. And because of the dorsal diaphragm and the ventral diaphragm, the entire insect body cavity can be divided into three sinus or three compartments. The first compartment is pericardial sinus. And the second compartment is perivisceral sinus because your insect gut stays there. That's in the middle part. That's where the gut is there. And the ventral is perineural sinus because the nervous system, the ventral nerve cord. So the top one is pericardial sinus. 
and perivisceral sinus in the middle, perineural sinus in the bottom, ventral side. So if you cut open dorsoventrally the body, you can see the C three chambers or three compartments because of two separating layers. One is on the dorsal side, which is a dorsal diaphragm. One is on the ventral side, which is a ventral diaphragm. So there are three compartments. Each compartment we call them as a sinus. It means the entire body cavity have two diaphragms and three sinus. You yeah, look into the, the most important part is the heart. Actually speaking, that's what I told you, the actually speaking, the blood is everywhere. The blood is everywhere. But the entire body cavity, if it is filling, filled with the entire blood, how the blood moves from one place to another place? It will not move unless until there is some kind of mechanism. There is some kind of pumping organ. So that's the, how the insects have a dorsal blood vessel. This dorsal blood vessel is a very, very thin tissue. A dorsal blood vessel is actually a pumping organ which creates some kind of turbulence, which creates some kind of a wave so that the blood moves from one place to another place. That will be disgusting. So the dorsal blood vessel is the principal pulsatory organ, is the principal pumping organ, a blood conducting organ. And uh, this we call them as a dorsal blood vessel because it is located on the dorsal side of the insect. And because of the pumping organ, because it's a pumping organ, there should be some openings so that the blood comes in and blood goes more. So this pumping organ will have a small openings. These openings, we call them as ostia. Because of the ostia, you just imagine the insect, which is a whole big uh, round pipe kind of structure, which is Imagine a big pipe, that's a hemocyl. On the dorsal side, there's a very, very thin line, a pipe kind of string. Actually, if you cut open the insect, you don't see the dorsal blood vessel immediately like gut and ventral nerve cord. It's a very, very thin structure. And it is closed at the posterior end, and it is opened at the anterior end. So it is open at the anterior end means it is open at the head. So it is closed at the posterior end and it is open at the anterior. It means, remember, the blood moves only one word, one side, from back side to front side because the front side is open. And that opening is usually at the frontal sac. So that's how this dorsal blood vessel is extremely important for conducting or for pumping or for creating the pressure so that the blood moves from one place to another place. Otherwise, it's all body cavity, unless until there's some kind of turbulences, unless until there's some kind of waves are created inside the blood cavity or hemocyl, blood cannot move, blood will be stand still. And this dorsal blood vessel is extremely important to understand. And you see in this picture, the dorsal blood vessel on the dorsal side, which has got a small ostia openings, ostia openings, on the posterior side it is closed, and the anterior side it is open. This dorsal blood vessel can again be divided into aorta and heart. We actually call the entire dorsal blood vessel as a heart, but however, usually we call the pumping organ or pumping place as a heart. So that is the reason here, here again in the dorsal blood vessel, the anterior side, the anterior part, 
of the dorsal blazer, which is a very, very thin pipe kind of structure with no muscles and no walls. With no muscles and no walls. And also it's a very, very simple, unperforated means without any holes. And that simple pipe in the thoracic region and also in the head region, we call it as a iota. And the most important part is heart. And this, you can see in the picture, the heart is divided segmentally into different chambers. It means one part is in one chamber and the, each chamber are being divided with the walls, openings. So ventral, laterally, they have a left side hole and they have a right side hole. So if you take, this is a entire structure. On the left side, there is one wall, one wall. On the right side, there is another wall. They are ostia, openings. So opening and closing mechanism will have in a different style. So posterior side of this heart is always closed. That's what I told you, only in the anterior side, only in the front side. It means the tip part of the iota is open, that opening is in the head. And that's always in the frontal sac nearby. And how this heart moves? Well, there should be some kind of mechanism. Otherwise, these holes should be open and close, open and close. And this opening and close will not happen so easily because this entire structure is a very, very simple, very, very simple tissue. It will not have any mechanism. That is the reason this entire heart part, literally, they are connected with some kind of muscles. So that if the muscles pull, it will be bulging. If the muscles relax, this is how the entire heart part can be relaxing and closing, relaxing, relaxing, closing, relaxing, closing. And that movement is because of muscles, so some kind of muscles. So these muscles look like a fan kind of structure. And these alary muscles are very, very important. And we have seen in the previous picture, the diaphragm, there's a dorsal diaphragm and the ventral diaphragm. It means these alary muscles are connected to the diaphragm one side and other side to the heart. So that there's a kind of mechanism so that the heart will be relaxing and closing, relaxing and closing. If it is relaxing, these holes open. The blood moves inside. If it is closing, the, the ostia closes so that blood moves forward. So this is, uh, the heart part is extremely important. They are segmentally divided into chambers and based on the segment or abdominal segments. And usually the ostia may be in uh, uh, maybe maybe nine numbers in most of the cases. In the primitive insects, it may be going to 12 numbers or so. And the, as far as the pulsatile organs, the most important pulsatile organ is the heart. Pulsatile organ is nothing but a pumping organ, is nothing but a conducting organ. So as far as the insect circulatory system is concerned, the principal and the most important pulsatile organ is the heart. But however, but however, insects also have an accessory pulsatile organ, very, very simple pulsatile, simple pumping organ at the joints of the wings, at the joints of the legs, so that blood will be pumped inside the veins, inside the veins of the wings, inside the legs, so that the blood will go. And the most important, important factor here is the insect hemocele, the blood have a direct contact with all the muscles, all the cells. The blood have the direct contact. So it's actually 
all the internal organs are actually taking a bath inside the blood. So taking a bath inside the blood. So there's no question of directly supplying blood. No, everything is bathed. Everything, any, any organs, in, insect local on any organs go to hemonym flow. Blood supply is not But the interesting thing is, the blood should keep on moving. Blood should, keep, it should, it should not be static. So that's the reason. Pulsatile organ is the heart. The heart is the principal pulsatile organ. And they do have an accessory pulsatile organ, a small pumps at the base of the legs, at the base of the wing, so that the blood is pumped inside the veins of the things. The blood is pumped inside the coxatrochanter to tibia tasks. And another important here to understand is allery muscles. Allery muscles, they look like a fan kind of arrangement. So these allery muscles play a very, very important role. And they are attached to the dorsal diaphragm and also to the IOR heart. So these allery muscles play extremely important role as far as the pumping mechanism is concerned. The entire pumping mechanism of the heart is just because of the movement of the allergy muscles. That's how the ostia opens and closes, opens and closes. Let us see how it opens and how it closes. Imagine, there's an ostia here, there's an ostia. And during the resting stage, resting means during the resting stage, relaxed stage, that's called diastole stage, the allergy muscles pull up. The allergy muscles pull up the heart. And when the allergy muscles pull up the heart, the heart entire volume becomes large. And because of that, the ostia opens. When the ostia opens, the entire blood flow through from outside to inside the heart, outside to inside the heart. Everywhere blood is there, entire outside is the blood. But however, the movement should come. That movement is because during the relaxation, the ostia opens and the blood flows inside. Once the blood flows inside, it actually starts from the posterior end to anterior end, remember. It means the first ostia opens at the last abdominal segment. So blood moves inside and the ostia closes and the, it actually, it, it's, a, it's a continuous process like relaxation, ostia opens, the blood flows inside and the next ostia, uh, ostia actually opens, this one again next. For example, the last ostia, during the relaxation, it opens, the blood flows inside, immediately it closes, contraction phase. When it closes, the blood moves forward, and the next one opens, again it closes, next one opens, again it, that's how from posterior end to anterior end, the blood gets inside, moves forward. So these are the two phases, one is relaxation, diastole, where the walls or ostia opens, the blood flows inside. And the next stage is systole. It's a continuous. Diastole, systole, diastole, systole. The same ostia. Diastole, systole, diastole, systole, diastole, systole, diastole, systole. That's how the blood moves from posterior end to anterior end. And what about the blood? What about the hemolym? What can you expect, the hemolym? Probably in the childhood, during your childhood days, you must be wondering why the cockroach blood is white color. That's how people discuss during the childhood. The most important speciality of the insect blood is, remember, insect blood does not carry oxygen unlike in the humans and the other animals. Insect blood is the not carrier of oxygen. In our case, insect blood is the carrier of oxygen. And that is because of hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is red in color. That's the reason our blood is red in color. But as far as the insects are concerned, they doesn't have the hemoglobin because they don't have a role to play as far as the oxygen movement is concerned. Because insects have a separate 
system as far as the respiration is concerned they directly supply the oxygen to each and every cell that's a different system respiratory system spiracular system tracheal system so because the insect blood insect circulatory system have no role as far as the oxygen movement from one place to one cell they doesn't have a hemoglobin that's the reason they are colorless the insect blood is colorless no color but however the color of the insect blood may be sometimes yellow color sometimes green color because of the plant materials what it depends upon the food what they eat and another thing is insect blood is also acidic slightly acidic not too much acidic probably around 6.5 something like that and you know very well insect blood has a role to play for the movement of all these materials from one place to another it means insect blood will have amino acids insect blood will have a proteins insect blood will have a simple fatty acids insect blood will have a hormones insect blood will have a salts insect blood will have inorganic ions insect blood will have a sugars insect blood have everything because that's a one most important liquid which actually transports all these materials from one place to another place another most important thing is the most important significant character as far as the insect blood is concerned they have a huge quantity of free amino acids that's one important character the insect blood have got their huge quantities of free amino acids because because once the food is digested and absorbed directly the amino acids will come to the blood from the digestive system from mid gut epithelia to directly it will be dumped inside the Blood, because blood is everywhere. Blood is a open circulatory system, just around the mid gut epithelium, just around the gut, everywhere is the blood. So it means the moment the proteins are digested and the amino acids are produced because of proteases, then immediately these amino acids will be absorbed, will be absorbed through mid gut epithelium and will be directly going and dissolving in the insect blood. And the another important thing is trehalose. Trehalose is a disaccharide, which is a very, very important disaccharide as far as the insects is concerned. And insect blood will have a huge quantities of trehalose. And insect, another important character is insect blood does not contain vitamin K, which is used for the blood clotting mechanism as far as the humans are concerned. Two things now we remember. Insect blood does not carry oxygen. And that's the reason insect blood does not contain hemoglobin. That's the reason insect blood is not in red color. And another character is insect blood does not contain vitamin K. So there is no blood cutting mechanism. And insect blood is having growth plasma and also blood cells, hemocytes. So 90% is a watery plasma and the remaining 10% are the blood cells. Usually this volume and the quantities of the blood, which is about 5 to 40% of the total insect weight. The blood cells, the blood cells, the hemocytes, there are four important types of the blood cells. One is prohemocytes. These prohemocytes, they are small, rounded cells with large nucleus. And they are the one frequently giving and uh, modifying to multiplication process to other types of cells. And the second one is plasmatocytes. They are the most abundant blood cells and they are phagocytic. They are phagocytic. It means the plasmatocytes have a very, very important role as far as the defense mechanism is concerned. And the third one is granular hemocytes. They are a little bigger in size and they also have a most important duty to perform as a phagocytic. And another category is cystocytes. They are anticoagulants. They're actually specialized granular hemocytes. 
and they have phenol oxidases which are used for defense me mechanism. So these are the four important uh, blood cells, hemocytes, and here the most important factor as far as the blood cells are concerned, the plasmodes there, which are very, very abundant in numbers. And they have a duty to perform as a defense mechanism through phagocytic mechanism. It means, it means by understanding the entire circulatory system and the processes, the important duties, the important duties as far as the insect blood is concerned, they have a very important role as far as the storage and transport of the food materials. They have very important role for the storage and transport of the food materials and minerals. Because all the proteins, amino acids, fat, hormones, ions, salts, water, and everything is dissolved in the blood. And that's how they should be transported from one place to another. Though everything is bathed inside, but still there should be a movement. It means when the movement of the blood is there, it's a transport mechanism. And they store a lot of water, like 90% of the plasma. And it's very, very useful and as a protectant during the desiccation time because the, it contains 90% of the water. And the circulatory system also helps during molting. That's what I told you. During the molting process, when the insect has to split the old cuticle, then they have to make some kind of pressure inside the body volume should increase. And that's how, when the body volume increases, the old cuticle splits from the Y-shaped, inverted Y-shaped ecdesial suture. And the fourth one is phagocytosis. Yes, it's a wonderful defense mechanism performed with the blood cells because they capture all these bacteria, virus, Small chemical molecules, even sometimes metabolic wastes, so that these metabolic wastes are the microorganisms, they should not have any deleterious effects on the other cells. And another mechanism is encapsulation. If the molecule, if the chemical, if sorry, if the, if the microorganism is bigger size, some waste material is bigger in size, which cannot be phagocytic. So then in that case, four or five cells comes together, they catch hold of, they just surround this waste material or the outside or microorganisms so that it gets that killed. And they also have a wonderful uh, role in sec through secretion and metabolism. And the blood cells, Blood cells, they have a very, very important role as far as the formation of the basement membrane. And also these blood cells, they, they, they play a very important role in the detoxification as well. And in some insects, in some insects, they do a defense mechanism through reflex bleeding. They split the blood, they split the blood outside so that the enemies, they get away. Enemies will think, yeah, something bad is happening. And that's how the enemies, these insects, they have a protection from the enemies through this mechanism. So it means the insect blood have a lot of role in storage and transport of the food materials and minerals, ions, hormones, whatnot, everything. They, do, they have a lot of water, that's 90% of the plasma is water. And the blood circulatory system helps during the molting stage. And these blood cells, they also have a lot of role in the defense mechanism through phagocytosis and encapsulation and other duties as well. This is all about the insect circulatory system. The insect circulatory system is a open circulatory system. 
it's not the closed circulatory system to brief the entire lecture in few words insect circulatory system is the open circulatory system it means the blood is everywhere blood will not flow through the veins blood will not flow through the pipes the entire body cavity is filled with the blood the blood we call them as a hemolymph the body cavity we call them as a hemocyte so when the blood is everywhere inside the body cavity it cannot be static there should be some kind of movement so that the blood moves from one place to another place so that all these materials will be supplied to different cells and tissues and for aiding this kind of movement like in humans we have a heart in humans we have a heart which actually takes the blood old blood and fil filters whatever it is then pumps out so insect humans we have a heart which is a pumping mechanism so similarly insects also have a pump a pumping mechanism a pulsatile organ a pumping organ that pumping organ is a dorsal blood vessel the dorsal blood vessel is a simple a tissue a connective tissue a simple connective tissue pipe kind of structure which is extended from posterior end to anterior end it is closed at the posterior end it is open at the anterior end it means the blood flows only from back to front through this aorta through this heart through this dorsal blood vessel but inside it may it will move from back front to back but as far as the heart is concerned it is only a one side movement from back side to front side and this heart is again divided into aorta in the anterior side which is a th thin a pipe kind of structure which has no muscles and no walls no openings except the front opening which is at the frontal side in the head whereas the heart heart has a lot of compartments and each compartment is separated by small walls we call them as aorta so that's how the, there is a kind of mechanism with the help of muscles alary muscles so alary muscles are attached to this heart from the dorsal diaphragm so that's how the heart opens and closes opens and closes when it relaxes the aorta opens the blood enters inside and immediately it diast systole when it contracts then blood moves forward that's how bloods get in and moves forward bloods get in and moves forward from each aorta ostia from each walls the blood get in immediately closes and moves forward that's how the blood moves from posterior to anterior and insect blood very very special and important character as far as the insect blood is insect blood does not does not carry the oxygen that's how the insect blood is colorless because it does not have the hemoglobin and insect blood does not have vitamin k that's the reason insect blood a clotting mechanism is absent unlike humans but the insect blood will have all the minerals all the proteins all the amino acids all the ions but the most important factor is they have a huge quantities of free amino acids number 1 number 2 they have a disaccharide called trehalose as a major sugar in the insect blood and also the insect blood is so slightly acidic but insect blood contains huge quantities of sodium chloride and potassium chloride and insect blood cells are different kinds but the most important duty of the insect blood is actually for the defense mechanism phagocytosis and encapsulation so with this we are actually closing this lecture and uh, we will uh, uh, we are trying here to understand as far as the circulatory system is concerned